Hey, hello and welcome everybody. I am Herbert and in this video, we're going to be building our own port scanner. Now, port scanners, if you don't know what a port scanner is, which I doubt because if you don't know what a port scanner is, you probably are not watching this video. But anyway, uh, port scanners are basically something that will check if a port is open on a specific host. Now there's a ton of way of uh, there's a ton of way of checking whether a port is open. You can download port scanners uh, from anywhere you want. You can use uh, Nmap. There's a ton of port scanners out there, but I think that the best way to actually use a port scanner is to write it yourself because it's a small script. And if you're running a Linux server, for example, the chances are Python is already installed on your computer on your server and i think that you know writing your own python scripts always always gives you a little bit more satisfaction than just downloading something off the internet and also you know i'm a tech geek so i like writing my own stuff so without further ado let's just get straight into the video let's start writing our script so i actually i have my script over here i already wrote it so i'm just going to copy it from the other monitor so bear with me if i'm looking on the other monitor over here uh i'm gonna Here's the proof, I wrote it myself. It's not just copied from the internet, okay? Uh, although I did steal a little bit of things from the internet, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. We all do that kind of stuff, right? We all just copy stuff from the internet. We just copy paste off of, uh, of Google. We just go onto Stack Overflow. We just copy code. We all do that. So there's no shame in that. You know, I'm not ashamed of it. You shouldn't be ashamed of it if you're just copying stuff off of, um, of, of Stack Overflow. And by the way, this isn't just a straight up copy. It's really something that I wrote myself. I just took a little bit of ideas from Stack Overflow because a lot of Stack Overflow code was a little bit overkill. What you get on Stack Overflow is often just uh, lead coders who just want to show off their skills and uh, just, you know, people just copy pasting that stuff. Uh, it doesn't really teach you much. So what I do is I go into Stack Overflow. I look up a few things and I just take whatever I need because a lot of the things that you see on Stack Overflow are just not, you know, they're not really important for the thing that we're doing. We're just building a simple port scanner because what you're going to get sometimes when you go into Stack Overflow is people adding just stupid features that you don't need. We just need a simple port scanner. Right. So how do we do this? We need sockets. Sockets are basically little pieces of software that are on your on your server so well pieces of software is not really the right thing but it's a sort of a module that you use in python and those sockets will actually uh open up a a session towards a host and it will test if a port is open and it will return a value if it is and if it isn't it will return another value so first of all we need to import that we'll need to import um we need to import socket so that's the first thing we need also you know I, I know that I'm just starting straight away. Uh, I do expect you know how to install Python and how to install uh, your uh, Visual Studio Code IDE. If you don't, just go ahead and look that up. It's not that hard. You just install uh, Visual Studio Code and you're probably just going to download uh, Python from the Python website. And if you're running Linux, uh, it's most likely already installed, especially if you're running something like Ubuntu that's pre-installed on your machine. So you don't need to go ahead and download that again, unless you, of course, want a more recent version than is on your machine. So uh, sockets. So we need sockets. First of all, we need sockets. So what are we going to do uh, first of all? So we're going to need to open up our sockets. So we're just going to type in sock, oops, sock, and we're going to equal that to socket dot socket, and we're going to open up a uh, socket dot uh, af underscore uh, inet comma, and then we're going to open up a stream using socket dot sock underscore stream there we go so that's what we need so this is actually something that we will need to do to open up our socket next up we're gonna uh, put our results so let's just put results uh, in sock dot uh, connect underscore external and now we're going to enter our host name so in my example i use my nas over here and i'm going to test 5000 i know for a fact that port 5000 is opened now uh let's actually let's now test that so let's actually do uh print no actually we need to do an if statement first so if 
result equals zero equals zero. Uh, then we want to print um, port um, uh, port five thousand is open, and else you want to print port five thousand is closed. So this is actually very simple, but we're going to get into a little bit more advanced stuff. Well, advanced, it's not really that advanced. It's pretty easy, uh, but I do want to test this first. So let's go ahead and try that first. So we're going to test it if port 5000 is open. We open up our socket and uh, we actually need to close our socket as well. But actually, we're just doing one run. Uh, we're going to use a for loop later on. So it's going to we're going to need to close the socket every time we loop over the uh, every time we loop over uh, the script. So let's test this first of all. Oops. So we need to put parentheses in here. So this is a mistake that I often make. So you need to make sure that you don't forget to put two parentheses. So it's going to take one argument. But this one argument is a list of two arguments. So it's a list of uh, the host name and the port. So you need to make sure open parentheses and then open parentheses again. You enter the host name, comma, the port, and then you close the parentheses again. So that's uh, okay. We saved it. Let's run it. And we can see that port, fi port 5000 is opened. Uh, we can actually change this to something like uh, 499. I don't know, just a random port. And we need to change this as well. So port, find, port uh, 499 is open or 4, 499 is closed. And I know for a fact that this port is closed. So it's going to return port 499 is closed. So this is all nice, but we do want a little bit more um, flexibility here. So what we're doing right now is actually just we're testing one port. And we do want to test if any ports in the list are opened. So that's what a port scanner is used for, right? So most likely you're just going to run a port scanner to see which ports are opened. Uh, you're not really going to do this often unless you want to test if something, uh, unless you, you know, you, you implemented firewall rules and you just want to make sure that those ports are open, you can use this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop and we're going to do for port, uh, for port in range. And we're going to define a range of 5,000 up until 5005, for example. So let's do that. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to check whether or not port 5000 is open and it's going to loop over until 5004 um, to make sure uh, that, that those ports are open, in fact. So what we're going to do is for port in range. So we're going to need to change this variable over here over to port. And now we're going to change this as well. So we're going to do port. Um, plus port plus there we go we're going to do the same thing for this one over here uh, plus port and we're going to do it like this and also we'll need to tell it it's a string because if we don't tell it it's a string it's going to try to concatenate a integer and a string and that's not going to work. So what we do right now is let's go over it for uh, for a minute here. Oh, also, like I said, we need to uh, socket.close. Because if we don't do socket.close, the socket is going to remain open and we're going to keep looping and the socket will be in use by the first loop. And so we need to loop over, get our results, close the socket and start all over again. So need to keep that in mind. So need, need to make sure that socket.close is also, um, you also type in socket.close. Now I can actually run this. This should run. Oops, looks like we did an oopsie again. Uh, so let's see here. Socket.close takes one argument, zero given. Hmm. Looks like I, Oh, I think it's sock.close. Yeah, it's sock.close. I'm sorry, guys. So we need to make sure that it's sock.close. So this socket over here needs to be closed. That's socket.close. All right. So let's run that again. As you can see, 5000 is open. 5001 is also open. 5002 is closed. 5003 is closed. And 5004 is also closed. So this is pretty much 
the simplest port scanner you can get, right? And you can also define whatever you want over here. So you can actually define, uh, you can actually define whatever range of ports you want. You can start from one and go all the way up to nine, nine thousand, for example. So that 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 shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that uh, some hosts, especially if you're testing on external. Uh, on external devices, uh, a lot of devices will actually block port scanners. So try to do this at home. Don't do it on any, you know, don't try to port scan a bank's website because it's just going to stop uh, answering your requests. So you need to keep that in mind. All right. I think that's it. I hope you learned a little bit about this. Actually, what I will do is I will just create a GitHub page and I'll just link the GitHub page down below. It's going to be easier than uploading it to my website. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's been a while. I'm back. Uh, I'm not back in full force. I'm still working a full-time job, so I might not be back, you know, at the same rate that I used to be always. Uh, but anyway, I'm back. I'm back at making videos. I hope you enjoyed this one, and catch you later, guys. Bye-bye.